Spreadsheets are a common and versatile tool used to present information. You may be familiar with using spreadsheets for budgeting or project management, but there are many different ways to use a spreadsheet. You could organize information, such as travel expenses or a shopping list, create a tracker to manage the people and tasks for a project, or keep a log of grades or assignments for school or sales and invoices for a small business. If you completed the first two Google Sheet lessons, you formatted a sheet containing raw data about shirts sold for a community fundraiser. Then analyze the data with filters, functions, and charts. But spreadsheets aren't just for organizing and analyzing information. They are also useful tools for making calculations and projections for a business or project. In this lesson, you will import a spreadsheet in another file format into Google Sheets and combine your spreadsheets to create a broader and more inclusive view of the sales data for the fundraiser. Use functions to make calculations and summarize the data so you and your collaborators can scan the sheet quickly to find the necessary information. Use conditional formatting to make specific details in your sheet stand out. And insert non-text elements such as links and images into your sheet to make it more useful and interactive. This lesson uses Google Sheets, but you can apply these concepts in any spreadsheet application. To work on this lesson, sign into your Google account. Open a new tab in your browser and navigate to google.com. If you are not signed in, do so now. If you do not have a Google account, pause the video and create one. If you completed the second lesson, continue using the spreadsheet from that lesson. Open Google Drive, and find the file. If not, use the starter project. Open the starter project and make a copy of the spreadsheet. Remove the words copy of and add your name to the title. Now it's your turn. Sign into your Google account, open Google Drive and find your spreadsheet from the previous lesson, or make a copy of the starter project, and update the title. At work, in your community, or at home, you may be given a spreadsheet of data to incorporate into another spreadsheet. You might need to compile two different data sets. Or you might want to create a spreadsheet from a different file type to make it easier to work with. For example, your manager may send you a monthly sales report that you need to add to the rest of the reports for the year. Your classmates may send you a new stage of a project plan to incorporate into your project tracker. Or your friends may simultaneously be working in different spreadsheets, planning specific parts of an elaborate trip. Instead of managing several different spreadsheets in different formats, it's convenient to have them all in one location. In this video, you will download a spreadsheet in another file format and convert it using Google Sheets. Then you will combine the new sheet with your existing project. In this example, your team members collected data on a different aspect of the fundraiser, product cost and sales prices. And you need to combine their spreadsheet with your t-shirt sales spreadsheet so you can share all of the data. To begin, download the starter project next to this video Notice it's a different file format than Google Sheets. In a new tab, open Google Drive.
upload the spreadsheet. Finally, and save it. The information in these sheets, such as costs and prices, isn't found in the sales data. There's also not a natural place to cut and paste tables about product costs into an existing sheet. Plus, you already have a sheet of related data, and it's more convenient to have everything in one place. So, copy the new sheets to your existing project. Then rename them and assign them a new color. or import another file type like a CSV into your project. For this lesson, 
you will use the sales by team member and cost revenue and profit sheets. Now you've combined two spreadsheets into one. This will make working with the data much more convenient. Now it's your turn. Download the starter project, upload the file to Google Drive, open and save it in Google Sheets, and copy the new sheets to your existing spreadsheet. In this video, you will complete the data tables in your new sheets with functions. Functions are preset formulas used to make calculations in Google Sheets. Instead of manually adding or multiplying a row of numbers, functions do the work for you. You will use the multiply and sum functions to calculate the totals in the cost and profit tables. Then you will summarize that data and find the revenue in the profit summary. The cost, revenue, and profit will help you determine how much money was spent buying materials versus how much your community earned from sales. For example, you may think you made $500 selling shirts, but if you spent $200 on materials, then you really only earned $300. This information is laid out in tables, which shows the data in rows and columns. To start, use the multiply function to find the cost of each shirt type. The cost is the amount the fundraising committee spent to buy supplies. In this case, it's the shirts, which are also the units. You will multiply the cost per unit or the amount of each shirt at wholesale cost by the number of units purchased. In the cost column of the cost table, type an equal sign, then begin typing the word multiply. Select multiply from the menu. Click into the cell of the first number in your multiplication problem. Type a comma, then click into the next cell you want to multiply. Close the parenthesis and press enter to complete the function. You calculated the total cost of stocking crew neck t-shirts. If you see an error message, that's okay. Check your function and make sure it matches what's on the screen exactly. Then, Change the number format if it is not set to currency already to make sure it reflects the correct type of data. You could repeat these steps for the rest of the items in this table by using the multiplication functions. But to save time, click the handle of the cell with your function and drag down to populate the rest of the cells in the cost column. This applies the function to other cells relative to the rows and columns around it. Now you know how much your fundraising committee spent to purchase each type of shirt. Finally, use the sum function to calculate the total units purchased and total overall cost. These numbers tell you the total amount of the upfront cost for the fundraiser or how much the group spent on stocking t-shirts. Now that you've determined the cost for supplying the shirts, you can calculate how much money the fundraiser actually earned. Use the sum function to find the actual number of shirts sold in the current sales table. In the future, if you need to complete a particular calculation, consult the function list.
You might want to divide numbers to complete a budget. Count rows of guests when writing invitations. or substitute one place name with another when changing plans for an upcoming trip. Now, it's your turn. Use the multiply function to calculate cost, change the number format to currency, use the sum function to total your calculations and determine your current sales. And if you need to complete a particular calculation, you can consult the function list. In the previous video, you used functions to calculate the cost in your data tables to tell you more about how much money the community fundraiser spent preparing for the shirt sale. In this video, you will continue making calculations to summarize all of your data and find the profit for the t-shirt sales or how much money the fundraiser made or lost. To start, complete the first column of the profit table. The profit table uses the data from the cost and sales tables to find the overall profit or loss. Copy the column of the units purchased from the cost column. And paste it into the corresponding column in the profit table. Then, copy your costs and paste them into the next column. Oops, there's an error. Click into the cells to figure out the problem. The function is multiplying the columns that correspond to the current row, but you're trying to match the function in a different part of the spreadsheet. That's because the function you copied is a relative function. Typical cell references are relative. That means they change when a formula is copied to another cell because they are based on the cells around them. To fix this, use an absolute cell reference. Absolute cell references remain constant even when you copy them to another cell or sheet. Absolute references are important when you want to reference the same cell or range in multiple formulas. To create an absolute cell reference, add dollar signs to the letter and number. Then drag down the cell handle to populate the rest of the rows. Compare the results with the cost table. The numbers match. Nice work. Now copy and paste the unit sold from the current sales table so you can find the revenue.
The revenue tells you how much money the fundraiser actually made. Calculate the actual revenue. Multiply the number of units sold by their sales price. Next, calculate the actual profit. The profit is the difference between how much was spent to prepare for the fundraiser and how much was earned. Subtract the cost from the actual revenue. To make it easier to remember, add the formula under the header. and wrap the text so the entire header shows. Then subtract. and drag down the formula to complete the rest of the calculations. Now, use a subtraction formula again to find the remaining inventory or the number of shirts left over after the fundraiser is complete. This time, subtract the number of units sold from the number of units purchased. Calculate the totals for the three columns you just completed using the SUM function. Finally, complete your profit summary table. This pulls the totals from each of the tables into one place, so it's easy to reference and see the most important numbers, such as costs and profit. Transfer the functions you use in each table to the profit summary table. Use absolute cell references so they update automatically based on contents of the tables. Start with cost. Then copy and paste the functions from the revenue and actual profit columns and make them absolute.
Now that you've completed the cost, revenue, and profit calculations, you have a more detailed view of the sales data for the fundraiser so far. This is useful data for the fundraising committee because they might want to hold another fundraiser to sell more shirts or try selling something else instead. Now it's your turn. Complete the profit table using absolute cell references, subtraction formulas, and the multiply and sum functions. Complete the profit summary table with an absolute cell references and wrap the text in the header row. In the previous videos, you used functions to make calculations about the cost, revenue, and profits of your fundraiser. You also might want to calculate the average price of a sale a particular team member makes, or identify a customer's maximum number of shirts orders to see if they'd be interested in ordering more in the future. With this data, you can find details such as which salesperson recorded the highest sales, who sold the greatest variety of shirts, and other specifics about each salesperson. In this video, you will use the minimum, maximum, and average functions to analyze your data as it relates to individual salespeople. To start, open the Sales by Team member sheet in your project. Then, find the average sale price for the first team member. An average is a measure used to find the middle or essential value of a set of numbers. To find the average, you would need to add together the set of values, then divide by the number of values. To make this calculation faster, use the average function. Type an equal sign, then begin typing average. Select the average function from the menu. Then select the range of numbers you'd like to include in the average. In this case, the revenue for each order the team member placed. And complete the function. This number represents the average cost of the t-shirts in each order. Just because someone sold the greatest number of shirts doesn't mean their average revenue is higher or lower than the other team members. This information could help the fundraising committee decide what to prioritize selling going forward. For example, maybe the least expensive shirts are more likely to sell, which brings in more profits, while all the more expensive shirts are not as popular. Now use the average function to find the average sales prices for the rest of the team members in their online sales. Then you can compare how much each team member sold on average and whether it was more or less than the amount made with online sales. Highlight the team member with the highest average order. Then use the min function to find the minimum cost of an order placed by each team member. This will show who made the lowest individual sale. For example, someone's lowest sale may be one shirt at $20, while another team member's lowest sale may be one shirt at $35. Type an equal sign, then the letters MIN to find the minimum function in the menu. Select the sales prices again, and complete the function.
Repeat those steps to calculate the minimum for the rest of the team members in the online orders. Highlight the team member with the highest minimum order. Next, use the max function to find the maximum cost of an order placed by each team member. This will show who made the largest individual sale, such as one order of five sweatshirts versus one order of five tank tops. Type an equal sign, then the letters MAX to find the maximum function in the menu. Select the orders and close the function. And complete the function for the rest of the column. Highlight the team member with the highest maximum order. Then calculate the minimum, maximum, and average for each column to show a broader picture of the sales data overall. Use the min function to find the minimum number of shirts purchased in each order. Then click the handle of the cell and drag over the function to the rest of the rows. Repeat those steps using the max function. and the average function. Knowing who the leading salesperson is or the average amount spent on online orders helps you draw important conclusions. Then you and your team can use the calculations to make better, data-driven decisions. Now it's your turn. Use the average, min, and max functions to determine the average, minimum, and maximum sale amount for each team member. Highlight the largest average, minimum, and maximum orders. And use the save functions to determine the average, minimum, and maximum values in the rest of the data sets. In previous videos, you used several methods for organizing and filtering data in your spreadsheet, including sorting and filter views to make it easier to find the information you're looking for. In this video, you will use conditional formatting to call attention to important data. Conditional formatting changes the background color of cells if they contain specific information. This helps you and your collaborators see the most important parts of the data without having to read through the entire sheet. You can use conditional formatting to change the color of cells if the value is below zero. For example, a financial loss. A sale is made online instead of by a team member, or a value is above a certain threshold. For example, if a customer orders more than five shirts. In this lesson, you will use conditional formatting to emphasize areas with financial losses, sales made on a specific date, 
and one other condition of your choosing. To start, open the cost, revenue, and profit sheet. Then open the conditional formatting menu. Apply conditional formatting to any sub that has a value below zero. This will show you where there were financial losses. By highlighting this, you can see what products aren't performing and use that information to guide future business decisions. You might use this information to decide not to order these shirts for the fundraiser next year, increase the price to cover business costs, or decrease the price to encourage more sales. Then apply conditional formatting to another type of data, such as sales made on a specific date. This information can show whether a specific date, such as a school sports event, brought in more sales than an average day, for instance. Set at least one more conditional formatting rule to your sheets, such as current sales above 10 or below 5 shirts. You might also use conditional formatting to emphasize cost above a certain amount in a budget spreadsheet. Due dates in your school assignment list. Task status in a work project plan. Or upcoming deadlines in your job search timeline. Now it's your turn. Apply conditional formatting rules to values below zero, sales made on a specific date, and at least one other type of data in your spreadsheet. At this point in the lesson, your spreadsheet contains charts and tables to help you visualize and summarize the data. In this video, you will add more non-text elements to your spreadsheet, including links and images. These elements will provide additional context for the data you've already included and help your collaborators interpret the contents of the sheets. You might want to link to a company website to show the shirt designs available, a social media profile to help others connect with your company, or an online portfolio of a particular salesperson or team. To start, open the Sales by Team member sheet to add links. Open the Starter Project links next to this video and make a copy. This example uses a scanned copy of an invoice. 
This is helpful to include if a customer has placed an order but has not yet paid, so the salesperson can be sure to follow up. Then get a shareable URL and copy it. In the invoice column of your spreadsheet, paste the URL. Then insert an image. You could also include a headshot for each salesperson, a photo of the t-shirt designs, or a scanned picture of a size chart. Images are often saved as JPEG files. Download the JPEG starter project and save it to Google Drive. Then insert the image. Move the image so it doesn't overlap with any important data. Next, insert a drawing. You might want to show a mock-up of a t-shirt design, a company logo, or an advertisement for an event. If you don't have a design in mind, create a drawing just to practice. You can also add forms to link to a survey and collect more feedback, charts to create a visual for a presentation, and links to other sheets to help collaborators quickly navigate from one section to another. In the online sales column, link to the filter view sheet so that anyone using the spreadsheet can find information quickly without needing to create their own filters. Now, it's your turn. Make a copy of the starter projects and save them to Google Drive, insert a link to the document, insert the image of the invoice, insert a drawing, and insert a link to another sheet in the spreadsheet.